I remember thinking, this just doesn't, it, it doesn't feel real. We got the results the week between Christmas and New Year's that it was, they believed, anesthesioneuroblastoma. My name is Angie Reed. I'm from Scottsdale, Arizona, and was diagnosed with anesthesioneuroblastoma a little over a year ago. I took it upon myself to start researching to see who the big players were in this specific kind of cancer. And I came up with a, a few institutions, but the first one that I called and made contact with was Hopkins. And it was because Doctors London and Gallia have been doing this work on this tumor with the NIH for a number of years now. Hey Angie, Hi. how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. I met Angie about a year ago, and she had reached out to me with a new diagnosis of esthesioneuroblastoma. And so I gave her a call and talked to her a little bit about her new diagnosis, and then she came to see us about a week later. We had her pathology uh, reviewed by our uh, head and neck uh, pathology group, and then we reviewed her case at our multidisciplinary head and neck uh, tumor board, and the, the consensus recommendation was consistent with what we had told her, which was surgical resection followed by post-operative radiotherapy. I remember getting up when it was still dark, and my husband drove me to the circle drive to go and have the biggest procedure of my life ever done. The procedure is fairly complex. There's a lot of important neurovascular structures that are nearby that we have to pay close attention to. So it does take a lot of time to be able to dissect around the tumor appropriately and also to make sure that we've removed the entire tumor and that we've gotten negative margins, uh, which is an important thing when we approach these tumors endoscopically. After surgery, I went home and recovered for about six weeks and then returned for proton treatment, which lasted about five weeks. So I think all in, it took somewhere around three and a half months for me to get the much desired result of free of disease. So I was grateful to hear those words come out of my, my doctor's mouths. I think Angie's prognosis is great. I think it's exceptional. The surgery that she had and the post-operative uh, radiotherapy she had, I, I, th I think she, her future is very, very bright. It makes us feel fantastic when we see a patient do well after surgery, when they've recovered well. And I think one thing that's important for Dr. Galli and I is not only taking good care of patients now, but also trying to take care of patients in the future. Both of our labs specifically focus in olfactory neuroblastoma, and it's critical to perform these research studies so that we can understand this rare tumor better. And by understanding better, we're able to develop new ways of targeting this tumor and to try to help improve patient outcomes in the long run. One of the great things about Hopkins is that we see a lot of rare pathologies, including olfactory neuroblastoma, and my lab has been interested in that disease for almost 15 years, and we've collected a lot of samples over that period of time. Together with colleagues at Hopkins, we've been able to look at the genetics of olfactory neuroblastoma and have identified a, a common genetic alteration. More recently, Dr. London and I have looked at immunotherapeutic and other targets in this tumor. All of this will hopefully help us better understand and treat patients with olfactory neuroblastoma. Hi. Hi, love. Hi. Do you miss us? I miss you so much. We miss you. It's a commitment to decide to have this type of surgery and, and radiation and then follow-up care this far from home. My husband and I are very close. We're very close with my kids. And they were all very worried. But that, uh, the help from those two surgeons was, was it, it was everything we needed and we didn't know we needed at the time. I think going through this whole process has made me realize I'm stronger than I thought I was. Regardless of my age, I get to decide what my life looks like. I can still fast forward and, and see myself doing exactly what I'd hoped to do. So I, I'm grateful that the care that I've received is gonna allow me to have those same dreams that I had 25 years ago when I said I do to the man that, that I'm with today. <laughs>